Unit 10, Organic Farming and Gardening. What is organic? I mean, we hear the word a lot, but what does it really mean when something is labeled organic? Well, according to the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, organic is a labeling term that refers to an agricultural product produced in accordance with the act, the organic act, and the regulations in this part. <clears throat> organic production, according to the USDA, is a production system that is managed in accordance with the act and regulations in this part to respond to site-specific conditions by integrating cultural, biological, and mechanical practices that foster cycling of resources, <clears throat> excuse me, promote ecological balance and conserve biodiversity. Hmm. Another working definition is food produced using no or minimal offsite inputs and any offsite inputs have no synthetic inputs. Oh. So there are some issues with those definitions. With the USDA definitions, one has to read the entire National Organic Program Handbook to fully understand the requirements. It's also important to note that the USDA definition of organic doesn't completely preclude the use of synthetic substances in production of both crops and animal products. <clears throat> the alternative definition doesn't define synthetic and natural doesn't necessarily mean healthy or safe. For instance, tobacco, heroin, arsenic, and strychnine are completely natural with no artificial ingredients, but they aren't healthy or safe. And in fact, the USDA prohibits the use of tobacco dust in organic production. Um, tobacco dust is sometimes used as an insecticide, but not in organic production. <clears throat> Organic labeling. There are different levels of labeling that may contain the word organic in it. We'll take a look at those here. Now, if a product label states 100% organic, then the product and all of its ingredients must be certified organic. If a product label simply states organic, then the product must be 95% certified organic. Additionally, the USDA states that the term organic may not be used in a product name to modify a non-organic ingredient in the product. The USDA has an organic seal, which may only be displayed on products that are certified organic. This is that seal. If you see this seal on a product, then that product is certified organic by the USDA within the limitations of what that means. Other parts of the label using the word organic, if the product label states that something is made with organic ingredients, then it has to meet certain requirements meaning at least 70% of the ingredients must be certified organic, and the producer must be able to show the origin of all those ingredients. If the main label doesn't state made with organic ingredients, <clears throat> a producer can indicate on the information label, that's the part that lists the ingredients and the percentages and that sort of thing, um, can list on the information label that certain ingredients are organic. In this case, there's no requirement for a minimum amount of organic ingredients except the ones so labeled to be organic. So you may have a product that has 10 ingredients, only one of which is uh, organic, certified organic. But if it says on that information part that that ingredient is organic, then that one has to be able to be certified. Uh, the rest of them do not. So what does this certification process mean? Well, if one sells food or materials, so wool and compost, for instance, would be examples of materials, and you sell those 
products, food or materials, as organic, then it's necessary to be certified. And certification is a process that includes the producer developing a production and operation plan, applying for certification with a certifying organization, paying any applicable fees, maintaining all records related to the operation for at least five years, allowing on-site inspections with complete access to all facilities, and notifying the certifying body or organization of any change, including accidental application of excluded substances from drift. So for instance, your operation is organic, your neighbor's isn't, he applies a pesticide on a windy day, it drifts onto your property, you're required to notify the certifying body that that has happened. <clears throat> and organic producers have to be recertified each year. Now, if the operation remains the same, recertification basically involves filling out the paperwork and paying the fee. However, if the operation has a change, say you've added a new production area, or you've say you've had a farm and now you've added a new field to that farm, or you've added a production item that's substantially different from what you've done in the previous years. For instance, um, you've been selling all vegetable produce and you've decided to add eggs and chicken. Um, then the new portion has to go through the complete certifying process with the plan you know, with the paperwork, with the fees, with the uh, certifying body. Certification costs vary with the complexity of the operation and with the certifying organization. So there are different organizations that can certify an operation as organic, um, <clears throat> and those different organizations have different fees. So the certifying cost, certification costs can vary and can range from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. And keep in mind that many of these fees have to be paid every year. Certifying organizations also charge for inspection fees and other costs. So being certified organic uh, can be both time consuming and costly. There are exemptions. A producer who sells less than $5,000 per year worth of goods is exempt from the certification process, but must still comply with all of the other regulations like what can be applied to the crops um, and all of that uh, that's laid out in the handbook. Such a producer isn't certified and thus isn't inspected and reviewed by a certified certification organization. So they're essentially on the honor system. Are there alternatives to the USDA certified organic program? Well, there are. <clears throat> A nonprofit organization has developed the certified naturally grown program that specifically targets smaller producers who grow according to the USDA requirements but aren't part of the certification program um, maybe because of the expense, um, the paperwork involved, whatever. The standards that this organization uses are based on the USDA standards, and the producer must allow inspections. However, the inspections might be done by other certified naturally grown producers, uh, county extension agents, uh, master gardeners, or customers. Farms are also subject to random soil testing for pesticide residue. Products produced this way can't be labeled organic because that's something that can only be done if you meet the USDA certification standards. So such products carry the certified naturally grown seal. So what about organic food production in urban areas. 
Well, the USDA makes no difference or distinction between organic production in rural areas and urban areas. The requirements for certification are exactly the same. However, urban land is likely to have had excluded substances applied to the soil within the past three years. That's one of the issues with the USDA organic is before you can start labeling your products as organic, um, the soil has to have not had any banned substance or excluded substance applied within three years. And you have to guarantee that. So if you don't know that something has been applied, then you have a three year period in which you can't label your product as organic. Um, urban soil may also have had non-agricultural substances applied or dumped, such as oil or diesel fuel or lead contaminated paint and that sort of thing. And uh, you may need testing to see if such products are there. Um, and depending on the urban farm or garden, it might be necessary to use materials obtained off-site to amend the soil and add fertility since the on-site materials for composting and et cetera may be limited. So we need to make sure that those materials brought in uh, are certified organic or else we have to go through that three year waiting period from the application of those materials. So finally here in closing, what are issues with organic production? The issues range from the cost and complexity of being certified to finding or creating suitable soil conditions, ensuring that production areas are free from pesticide drifts from neighboring properties. There are also issues with consumer perception. Some people view organically produced foods as better, but some people are unwilling to accept any imperfection and therefore typically don't buy uh, organically produced foods which may have you know, marks or things on them that uh, foods produced with pesticides may not have. Organically produced food typically has a price premium over traditionally produced foods. Uh, in some ways, that's a good thing. Your products can sell for more money. In some ways, though, this is an issue for locally produced foods, particularly those produced in lower income areas. So there are a lot of issues with planning and becoming certified, maintaining certification, and selling the products. Um, however, depending on the market that the producer is aiming at, it may be worth going through those issues. That concludes this unit.